So today is Sunday, and uh, this is the day that I annoy my wife by cooking dinner for the kids and her. This time of year, we do succotash a lot. Butterfly chicken sauteed with succotash. It's the go-to dish. It's so easy to make, it's almost humorous. I grew up on a chicken farm, actually, in Sonoma, California. To be honest with you, I never had really great chicken growing up. My grandma used to cook the hell out of the chicken. It wasn't until I got to France, and they, they actually cooked it so it was moist, it was tender, but it had flavor. It tasted like a chicken. I like taking the wing joints off. It'll cook a little better that way. And these are good for snacks. And let's cut the back one out and use these very strong poultry shears and hold the wing joint and the bone will come right out. Now here's the deal. You want to make sure the breast and the thighs are about the same height. Put your right hand down first, left hand the opposite way. And then literally I'm raising up my toes and I'm pushing through to crack all the bones. This is the fun part of cooking. This is the calisthenic part. I'm using just fresh kosher salt, and I use whole black pepper. I do not use white pepper. White pepper is black pepper with a husk removed, and I think the husk part has a lot of flavor. About two tablespoons of really good olive oil, and don't wait till it gets hot. Put the chicken in right away, and make sure it fits. That's a pretty good fit there. I'm gonna wash my hands. Take the pan and shake the chicken. You want to make sure it's not sticking to the pan. I'm going to use this beautiful cast iron grill that I have and place it right on top. And that should be enough weight to force the chicken down so it's going to cook evenly. Here's my kind of little philosophy of life about how to create a dish. I don't look at the recipe first and then go to the market. I go to the market first and then come home and then try to figure the whole thing out. Since it's the end of summer, we're gonna use beautiful corn and the true test, of course, if it tastes good, raw, it's good. And you don't wanna to go too deep into the corn. Everybody goes too deep. The cob can be slightly bitter and we're gonna use gorgeous string beans and they should be sweet. If they're not sweet, don't use them. I'm a big believer in leaving the little tail on. It's entirely aesthetic and I think it's cute. And the onion is the simplest part of this dish, and it should be a sweet onion. So everybody wants to know when a piece of meat is done, the chicken's done, the vegetables are done, and everybody wants to put it in the recipe, make sure it's perfect. Well, here's the deal. Every chicken's different, every piece of meat is different, every vegetable's different. So it's really, you've got to monitor the situation. So about every five minutes or so, we're gonna look at this guy, make sure the olive oil is equally distributed. And I'm gonna turn the chicken just slightly. So it goes to a different spot in the, in the pan. My wife's Southern, so she loves okra, so I've learned to really love okra. So we're gonna put a lot of okra into this dish. All right, now, cherry tomatoes. I'm very sort of goofy about this, but the cherry tomato has a little North Pole and a South Pole, and has an equator. I wanna cut it along the equator. Life is about the small details, and cutting a tomato this way just makes the dish taste better, I think. And habaneros are dangerous, but great. Just use a tiny bit. And the last ingredient is garlic. And here's the fun part. Put it right at the edge here, and you take a bigger knife and do the and you have perfectly smashed garlic. About 10, 12 minutes into cooking, we're gonna flip that chicken over. That looks good. So the skin is really getting crispy. We're not gonna put the weight back on, we're gonna let it go free form at this point. If you want to, what you can do is you can put a lid on which I think we're gonna do. So this, I think it's time for a glass of wine. So I'm gonna do some rosé. One should always try the wine to make sure that what we're gonna use in the dish is gonna work. That tastes great. Just about 160 degrees, maybe a little bit more. So I've discarded the fat, but I'm gonna save it. I have all this beautiful brown stuff here, and that's all the caramelization, and I wanna keep that. So I'm gonna add a little wine, and it also cleans the pan nicely for us. I'm gonna put this into a little bowl and we'll use that in the final dish. Remember I saved a little bit of the cooking liquid, which is olive oil, and a little bit of the, the juice from the chicken that's come out. I'm gonna actually use that to cook the vegetables. Throw the onions in right away. It doesn't, the pan does not have to be totally hot yet. You don't want them to get too brown. You want them just to cook through. I'm just gonna throw the beans right on top. And what'll happen is that the beans will steam And now I'm saying you can put the okra in, whole thing. There you go. Okay, so the trick now is to add some water. Thank you. And we have a little garlic and habanero chilies. 
Now, can you put the corn in for me? And let's put the tomatoes in. Beautiful. Let's put the liquid in. One more ingredient, buddy. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter in. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. When the okra's done, everything's done. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. We are ready to go. So, I'm gonna put the chicken right on top of here. I think it looks pretty good. What do you think? Is this better than doing homework? By a long shot. I think so. <laughs> Cooking in a restaurant, we don't have time. We have to do things fast. We have to, have to do things in bulk. Cooking at home and eating with the kids, it's a whole different ballgame. Not to have the stress and I can have fun, it's the greatest thing in the world.